So, my cousin Dean said, I told you I could drink my own sick. And I said, I didn't say you couldn't. I said you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. Hello. So, uh, you're my half-brother. How are you? What do you do? This is weird. Is this weird? I'm finding it quite weird. Would you like a drink? Uh, yeah, lovely. Yeah, I only bought two cans of Kestrel. And I've had both of them. Right. You're not seriously going to give them the 1961 Chateau Lafitte Rothschild? Darling, just because they live in a caravan doesn't mean they don't appreciate nice wine. And after all, he is my brother. One drink, then tell them to bugger off. Nice Chateau Lafitte, is it, Trevor? Uh, it's a bit whiny. Oh, well, thank you, Oz Clark. It'd be better when I stuck some Red Bull in it. <laughs> oh, that's blinding. It's like sangria with a kick. <sighs> And so cheap, at only £350 a bottle. Could I have a taste of that? Yeah, sure. Wow! That is simultaneously the worst and best drink I have ever had. Yeah, you should try my rock and roll coffee. I'll make one for you. Hmm. Not now, though. No, 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 it's easy. All you need is a catering to the Nescafe. Then you empty out most of the Nescafe until there's only a bit of Nescafe left in the bottom. Then you pour in two or three cans of harp, which you can still get. And then top it up with Baileys or vodka or, or whatever you haven't drunk already. Then shake it up and down. Hold it up to your mouth. Punch a hole in the other end with a kebab skewer. Then down it in one. Classic rock and roll coffee. Hmm. Maybe not now, though. Yeah, you're probably right. Maybe now would be inappropriate, seeing as I've just found out that I've got a different dad to the dad that I thought was my dad, but he wasn't my dad, there was another dad, and now that dad's dead. Trevor, I think that might be the longest load of words you've ever said. Yeah, I think I need to sit down. Not on that chair. <laughs> it's worth more than your car home. Half of that chair is mine. Well, you can only sit on half of it then. All right, then. Actually, this is quite uncomfortable. I think I'll just stand up. Um... Well, perhaps this might be the right moment to broach the rather tricky subject of the dividing up of the estate. Uh, I was wondering whether you, Trevor, might fancy giving Bridget and me the house, which is, you know, old and got no uh, DVDs or a, a tube station or what have you, and you'd just be rattling around in it anyway, and then you could have your half of the fortune and take that back to Essex and spend it on training shoes and baseball bats and football stickers. Because after all, half a fortune is better than no fortune at all, isn't it? I mean, it's still a fortune. Yeah, there ain't no fortune. I mean, obviously, there's probably a few mementos you'd like to take with you. Um, half that chair, for example. Or maybe a photo or two. What? Sorry, um, what was that thing you just said? There ain't no fortune. <laughs> oh, thank God. Because I thought for a second there, you said there wasn't a fortune. No, there ain't no money. Yes, exactly. There's plenty of money to go around. No, there's not nothing. Quite right, there's loads. No, I'm saying our dad ain't left us nothing. So he's left us something. No, you are such a knob end. Look, I'll read you what it says in the will. I heard the will. Not the part that was read out after you fainted like a hysterical Japanese schoolgirl. Yeah, listen. <clears throat> um, sorry, can you read? Yes! I'm just trying to find the right bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I didn't. I, I, I had no. I was just worried. Of course you can read. I am so, so sorry. This is awful. I have never been so embarrassed. Oh, shut up, Lloyd. Yes, my love. Yes, I shall. Yes, I should. You're quite right. Here we go. An important note to my two sons about my fortune. As, As Trevor would say, would there say, ain't nothing. There you ain't nothing. By which I mean there isn't anything. Now don't get confused by the double negative, Lloyd. You pedant. As you know, I have always had the deeply held ambition to actually be the man who broke the bank at Monte Carlo. So a few weeks ago, I went to Monte Carlo with seven suitcases filled with every penny I had and put it all on 34 red. Of course I won, but I still had not broken the bank at Monte Carlo. I bet again. Everything on 34 red. Of course I won. But the bank still remained unbroken, so I bet once more. All of it on 34 red. Of course, I lost. Oh, well. Oh, almost forgot. Since I've never introduced you to uh, Lloyd Trevor, Trevor Lloyd, I think you should see if you can get on. So I'm making it a condition of your inheritance that you have to live together in Orton Towers and look after it. And you may not sell it or move out for ten years. 
Otherwise, Otherwise it goes, it goes to, the to the National, National Trust, Trust. And none of us wants that. Not the National Trust. They're evil. They'll put in a cafe. And the whole place will be overrun with dogs and filthy children. Oh, God, help us. Who mentioned the National Trust? Monkey men, all of them. They can't be all bad. My dad was a member of the National Trust. No, your dad was a member of the National Front. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we're not going anywhere, bruv. I always knew I was born to this. 30 years of living in a caravan under a bypass, wondering why I seem to have an unhealthy fascination with spats, wondering why I wake up every morning with a craving for kedgery. I don't even know what kedgery is. Isn't it a type of all? I don't know, but whatever it is, I want to eat it. I've eaten roast hawk. It's fascinating, but avoid the beak. So, I'm moving in. Into the house that's been half rightfully mine since the day I was born. And while I'm living here, I want half of everything. Half of that ashtray, half of that dinner service, I mostly want the spoons. Half of that painting of an horse, the good half with the head, you can have the horse's arse. And half of that delicious boiled egg and marmite sarnie. In fact, I'll have that now. Mm. Anyone want the other half? Me, me. Mm. Plus, I think our old man had a good point. I suppose. I mean, if I'm going to have to get to know my long lost half-brother... What better way is there than to live with him? For ten years? Ten years? Ten years with these disgusting, filthy, ill-educated, bottom-feeding scumbags! Oh, it'll be nice. You and me can have girls' nights out, girls' nights in, ladies' nights, sleepovers, gym jam parties. You can introduce me to your mates. I do not want to sleep over with you. I do not want to sleep anywhere near you. And I don't want to have parties with you and your awful friend Jim, whoever he is, and his revolting jam. Now, if you'll let go of my arm, I'm going to go to the kitchen and wash the bit where you touched me and then cut it out with a hot knife. So, what do you say, Lloyd? Are you ready to live with the pods? P- pods? Pods plural? Yeah, the minute I realised that half of this house was mine, I got texting the rest of the family. Hold on, I got a text. Yeah, they're here. 